Hello friends, welcome to my channel, myself Parag Zambulkar. In this video, we will see menu driven programming in C++. Also, we will see one example. Why we require menu driven programming? So, in menu driven programming, we give some options to the user. User choose particular option and accordingly, user gets its output. This continues until user choose some option for exit. So, what are the applications of menu driven programming? better user interaction so user will have some good interface for the interaction user will have some options to choose and accordingly user will get some output then reusability in menu driven programming we are making better use of functions so that code is not repeated and we can make use of functions again and again so these are the applications of menu driven programming now question is how to implement menu driven programming in c++ language so see for that we require looping statements. So we can use for, while or do while. Anyone we can use. Then also we require switch statement. So by using looping statements and switch statement, we can implement menu driven programming in C++ programming language. Now we will see one example. So see, here I have opened VS code. Here already I have written one program. First we will see output and later we will see how to write code. So see, we will run it. We will go to terminal. Okay. First, we will compile it by using G++. So see, G++, our program name is menu driven, right? So see, menu, I am pressing tab. Okay. We got name, press enter. So there is no compilation error. Now see, A, that is the output file. Press tab. Okay. Now press enter. So see, here we got output. So in menu driven programming, we are providing options to the user, right? So see, here we are providing five options. One for addition, two for subtraction, three for multiplication, four for division and five for exit. So see, suppose I am choosing one. So see, enter two numbers. Suppose I am entering 20 and 30. Enter. So see, sum is 50, right? Now see, again we got option. Suppose I am choosing two. Okay, again enter two numbers, suppose same numbers I am entering, 20 and 30. Okay, so see, difference is minus 10, right? And again we got the option. Now see, suppose if we choose 3, suppose I am entering 3 and 7, something like this. Here we got product is 21, right? Suppose if we choose option 4, see. Suppose if we enter numbers 60 and 12, press enter. Okay, so see, here we got output, the quotient is 5, right? Now see, suppose if we want to exit, so see, we will choose option 5. So see, 5. So we have come outside the execution. Okay. So this was the output, right? Now we will see how program can be written. So see, here we have created one class, Calci. So as this class is for calculator, here we have written one function for the addition, right? And we are returning addition of two numbers. Then another function for subtraction. Then third function for multiplication. Fourth function for the division. So in this way, here we have written functions for addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. If you want, we can add more functions for more arithmetic operation. Okay. Now see, along with this function, here we have added one more function and that is show choices. Right. Here you can see. By this function, we are showing options to the user. Here you can see. Here we are showing some menus or options. 1 for addition, 2 for subtraction, 3 for multiplication, 4 for division, 5 for exit. And also we are giving message to the user to choose their choice. Now see, in main function, we are creating object of Calci class. Then we are defining two variables x and y. One variable choice for taking option from the user. Okay. Now see, here we have do while loop. So already I have told we have to use looping statement. We can also use for while or do while but some modifications we have to do in program there is one advantage of do while if we have not taken any choice from the user still in the beginning we can show options to the user and that is the advantage of do while but also we can use for or while loop but accordingly we have to do some modification in our program okay now see here we are using do while now see to show menus we are calling show choices function by using object right then we are saying choice in choice variable. Then we have switch statement. So here we are checking value of choice, right? 
what is the option that is entered by the user. Now see, if user have entered 1, then what we are doing, we are asking user to enter two numbers and those two numbers are saved in x and y. Then we are calling addition function for the addition of two numbers. Once addition is written from this function, then we are showing it to the user, right? And everything we are doing it by using this object, okay? Then suppose user enter choice 2, then what we are doing, we are calling subtraction function and the difference is shown to the user. If user enter 3, then we are calling multiply function. We are printing multiplication of the two numbers. If user enter 4, then we are calling divide function, right? And that quotient we are showing to the user. If user enters 5, then we are not taking any action. Just we are calling break. By this break, control will come outside the switch, right? So see, control will come outside the switch here, right? And after that, what we are doing in do while, in while, we are checking if choice is not equal to 5. So see, if choice is equal to 5, so see, condition is false. And as condition is false, we will come outside the while loop. And after that, return 0 and there program will get terminated, right? So basically, we are taking 5 from the user just to terminate the program, okay? We are coming outside the switch. Then again, here condition will be false. And after that, return 0 statement will be executed and program will be terminated, right? If user enters any other number other than 1 to 5. So in that case, we will show message invalid input. So in this way, we can do menu driven programming in C++ programming language by using any class. I will provide this program code in my Udemy course. You can download it from the resources. Okay, so we will meet in next video. Thank you.